everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. So today is the start of a new tutorial series that we will be doing. We'll basically just, yeah, go back to basics, do some drawing, freehand sketching, maybe play around with some techniques very slightly and quickly. These are meant to be hopefully under an hour. So not a lot spent on details, more just to get proportions correctly and just actually have some fun with pencils and different references and subject matter and so forth. Um, so I will be doing most of my sketching with an HP pencil, um, my trusty little Krita colors. I will keep all my erasers handy and I will see how it goes. We might some for some drawing just do basic outlines and just line work. Um, other times we might do some shading, play around with different techniques and stuff like that. So the reference is in the description below. Um, it's of an English bulldog resting his head on the side of an, a chair, um, which I thought would, I've done this drawing before on Twitch. I don't stream on Twitch anymore, um, but I thoroughly enjoyed drawing this reference. So I thought it would be fun for our first uh, tutorial on YouTube. So yeah, so let's get stuck in. So firstly, I usually choose a point a sub a part of the drawing or the reference that I would like to start with. Um, so the chair is a good starting place because it gives us something to walk work off of. Um, I also tend to not go with any of the stuff that's kind of inside the subject matter, like the eyes or the nose. I start with the basic of outline and shape so for this one i'm going to start with the chair and then work kind of from there around to the head and and then work our way in towards the eyes and the ears and the nose and the mouth so this reference is quite quite a bit of shapes and wrinkles and stuff of interest so you can you have lots of points to start off of. So I'm going to start with the chair because it gives us a nice little angle and uh, generally it's very rough in the beginning. If you go too big or too small uh, that's completely fine. This is purely for fun. So then I'm just going to is like a basic shape of the head and just move it around so I'm quite happy with that angle you can always make it a bit larger or smaller So I'm always looking at negative spaces, my shadows, and those types of shapes will help you determine kind of the correct proportion and shape for the actual important stuff of the drawing. So for instance, here with the lower jaw is a nice reference point for a shape and it's got wrinkles and all the shadows shows you the actual shape of it. Um, so you don't need to think a lot about what's going on. So I'm quite happy with that basic outline for now we can obviously play around with it it's supposed it will look strange in the beginning it's of 
trust me it never looks <laughs> never looks fantastic um, or to me anyways then I'm just gonna add in the cushion and I can see this needs to be brought out a bit more So here I will now kind of make, I'll zoom out my reference really far and just see the head shape. So it's kind of like a, that type of, oh, I don't know what those shapes are called. It's kind of like a skew rectangle. Um, and also the wrinkles are quite useful. So I'm gonna just add the main wrinkle that's goes from here, the bottom of the jaw, all the way up to about where the ear is. And then you can easily use shading as well. Um, Sort of how I start to map out the proper drawings with shading and everything. How you only look at the shadows or your darker areas and you kind of color them in to help kind of define that area and that shape. So you can do that as well, kind of make little sketches little lines and all of that so everything is moving in that direction so you must just note that you kind of have to follow that everything is kind of slanted this way so you can easily make that little slanted um, rectangle shape to help you out so then he would see that the top of the head kind of follows that that top of your little rectangle so it's very simply you break everything down into its raw shapes um, rather than looking at actually what you're drawing you need to forget sometimes that you are drawing an eye or you're drawing a nose. Um, it becomes very useful then and a lot easier to see your negative spaces. Uh, here I can see I kind of went a bit too far with that. So for this kind of middle wrinkle, it follows kind of that general shape. So I put it off initially here, which was a bit too far to the side. That's maybe a little too high up. Should be more there. Even still, it can maybe be a bit lower down. So now that general shape of the bulldog, I'm quite happy with this side of it. Uh, so now, so you've got the nose and then you've got the wrinkle that comes over top of the nose. So we're just going to make sure that it's all, so it's a bit too rounded here. So it goes a bit more like that. So then we slightly shift everything down a bit more yeah so it's constantly playing around with your shapes keeping a light hand um, and then it should work out just fine and this makes kind of almost like a petal shape with this right eye So the negative space here, this 
these three wrinkles move quite closely and then it goes into where the eye is and then there's that also and then you've got this little round bubble shape another shape for another wrinkle and then we can now see that we're putting in all these shapes it kind of all lines up and works correctly and is in proportion to one another so we're just connecting these now for the eye so the eye this eye is quite simple actually in its in its shape so you'll see in comparison to this right eye it's slightly lower and the top kind of fold is in line with this eye so I'm just going to draw like an imaginary little guideline so the top fold of the eye goes there and then we've got like it kind of makes a round shape and then it comes down like this into another wrinkle moving along here that connects to kind of the tear duct. So I'm going to ignore kind of the round shape of the actual pupil of the eye and we are going to draw just the outline. So I'm going to follow that shape of the fold for the top of the eye and it slants down and then it makes this kind of swoop very subtle not as pronounced as i did there and then obviously you've got looking at my negative spaces in the eye itself to determine how the pupil lies and then you just make your little half moon. So now you can see the basic shape roughly of our bulldog is now in. I'm quite happy with everything in here. It's all making sense and looks to be proportioned um, as well. So you've got to pick your point of reference, then you make sure that you've got the correct shape of it, kind of see the angles of it. So we've determined that it slants this way, the head and everything in it. And then you kind of just move up, you pick a side and then you start proportioning everything out from it you'll quickly realize when maybe your your point of reference was maybe too big or too small um, or maybe a line from there is not lining up um, to kind of your angle of the subject you've maybe maybe put it too straight or too flat um, so everything has to move in this kind of way so you can it's like those um, drawing videos you see of the people that make the faces they have got the basic oval shape and then they make all the little reference lines it's very similar follow the same thing I kind of just you just do it start doing it naturally anyways so now that we've got that now we still need to do the ear so I'm just going to do is this the main wrinkle that goes in there and then it just chops up so lots of lines going on but that's just generally how i sketch you can obviously you might be a bit more um, precise than me you might have less sketchy lines but that's, that's all completely fine. Maybe just a little bit more neat than me. So you'll see kind of the fold of the ear. That like little wishbone shape that it makes. Like that. If you look, the bottom of it lines up just slightly below this 
large crease that makes kind of like almost a star shape. So you just want to make sure that it's at the slightly lower than that. Slightly lower. And then this obviously if you would draw it down lines up with kind of this bottom of the neck. And then the ears folds also makes follows that same shape makes another little line. I'm completely ignoring the markings of the dog. It's got a brown kind of area here. I'm not interested in that at all. Um, because that's not really part of the actual structure of the dog. Now the shape of the ear makes kind of like a, a round and then a very sharp angle. And then it comes up. So we've now got a basic shape of the dog. I didn't even check the bottom of the ear lines up slightly with the top of the eye. Yeah, I would say that's about, that's about right. Okay, so then the animal, we've, I usually draw from the top of the head through the object and then kind of just make like a quick little shape. Then here, so we've now made this line and then I'm completely ignoring all of these folds that come from the chest to the, the paw. So you kind of make this triangle diamond shape at the bottom and then you've got a very deep shadow here as well so now our next major part of the dog is obviously the paw if you hear stuff on the outside it's just people moving so I do apologize for that um, so now the big thing that we need to draw still is the paw. So it's kind of, there's no real point of reference for it from this main drawing. So I'm going to start here at the top of the shoulder. So it's kind of like a main fold that comes in here and the bottom of it kind of in the middle so I'm gonna this is where you have to start playing around a bit with your shapes and proportions and kind of how far or how big you want to draw these things so I think maybe that's too low that initial line we're just gonna shorten it up. That looks a bit better. So now that I've got this main kind of neck fold in, there's another fold and then there's this. You can use this kind of space as your negative space, almost like a gap between the areas. So the paw will run in line with this so we can make another little odd rectangle. 
and then it doesn't go very low below that so I'm just gonna make like a shape like that so then we're gonna draw another fold and then then it goes across So now we're going to play around. And see if we've got it right our first try. It's always fantastic when you get it right the first time and you don't have to do a lot of erasing. So now I'm just making the paw and the elbow from the top of the shoulder makes kind of a triangle. The reference cuts off right by the elbow so you kind of the spots makes you want to make a dip like that but making a little triangle shape and then I'm gonna remove this line because it's kind of distracting so now I think we've got a basic shape to work off of so we've got our main neck fold and then we've got the triangle that makes the shoulder and the elbow and then this also comes this fold goes towards the elbow as well. just got to make sure this is very much like almost drawing hands as well um, when it comes to drawing the digits just getting them all correctly so they all slant like this from the nail so you can make your little basic little triangle shapes little arrow, arrow shapes and the point of the arrows are above obviously the bottom line so this is where I will start shading more just to help me with the shape um, because it makes it just slightly easier for me and then this top wrinkle and then make another one and then it all goes almost like this the smallest point is here at the bottom of Of the leg so it almost it follows this basic shape so it goes in then another digit this second one from the left is the largest one and then we've got this one and this one and then it makes these little folds where it meets back up again so now we've got to have a little look and see whether or not we are happy with the proportions. I think I'm quite fine with that for now. Um, quite happy with the way it looks. It's short and stubby. It's got your large kind of area here. Luckily, this is also why I chose the Bulldog reference, because these large areas can be quite deceiving and not very helpful. The wrinkles break up the animal into manageable chunks and shapes. So the face is made a lot easier because of the wrinkles and you can easily see the way they move with each other and the angles. Um, in relation to the other wrinkles, which makes it easier to draw the nose, which makes it easier to draw the eye, which makes it easier to draw the ear, and obviously makes it easier to draw something that's off away 
from your kind of main interest um, which makes it a lot easier uh, to man make it in manage your chunk if say for instance this was an animal with a smooth coat no wrinkles you would look for a reference that maybe got um, much more visible contrast highlights that you can use then as shapes to draw in relation to other things maybe animal that's got a lot of visible musculature um, same with people it's a lot easier when there's it's not just a flat smooth object which makes it more difficult to draw so this has technically a lot of spaces and shapes that you can use to build up the larger picture and break it basically into smaller little more manageable chunks um, so yeah that's just one of those things that you need to keep in mind um, when drawing freehand with no grid reference um, is you need to make a quick analysis of what you're drawing and see you know how small can you break it down? How many steps can you take to make it more proportionate to one another? Um, I think the more you can break it down, the better for your proportions. Um, and then it just obviously makes more sense. It will be a lot, it will be a smoother process. It might take a little bit longer and obviously the more you do it, uh, the better you will become at kind of seeing those little chunks of spaces and shapes and be easier to determine what will be your reference point to work off of. Okay, so I'm going to keep my HB in hand and we're going to do some refining with shadows and maybe some shading. Um, so I'm just going to go through and start at our maybe, yeah, just doing some more refining of all of our shapes. Because I'm quite happy now with the proportion of everything. So we can just go in and just make it a little bit more visually appealing and have more substance. I don't do this very often, so it sometimes will change depending on what I'm drawing. So yeah, you can use your blending stamps, you can use your powders. For me, this is maybe not something that I'll use powders for. There are other um, references and drawings that I have in mind that will work fantastic with some powder application. So the eye is obviously the most important bit. And obviously the wrinkles need some, at least some shading to it. Now we are further kind of defining our shapes and everything that happens within the shape that it's just not like a big blob. Um, but it's got some interest to it. Makes a bit more sense in the space. So if this was something that I would like to make a real kind of um, 
if this was a sketch or a drawing that I wanted to make frame that I want to frame or make a gallery piece or something obviously I'll be a bit more precise and think a bit of ahead or how I want to approach the shading and all of that but since this is just for demonstration I'm kind of just not putting much thought in it looking at just my darker areas areas of shading to help define all of our shapes And this is also a very good exercise to be able to quickly create shadows and shapes and very useful for your initial layers um, just to I'd say more useful if you're doing small drawings a lot of small drawings this really helps also to be able to quickly decide on what is your most important features uh, most important details um, because you're breaking down the animal into kind of just raw shapes and spaces you can easily start to see what becomes important to the actual drawing and what does not what becomes negligible and what's really important to define your shapes i don't do it very often because i like the very detail orientated um, more getting stuck in with things for a long time getting past the drawing phase This to me, I don't do this as often as maybe some other artists do, but it's not really for, it's not for everyone very important, obviously. Um, I've been doing this normally long enough that you kind of pick up certain um, tricks and the ability to draw freehand because gridding to me is basically drawing freehand just with a guide um, you still have to create all the shapes yourself you still have to make sure everything makes sense you just have the help of some blocks it just takes more time but you know that you're getting it right the first time rather than having to struggle with certain elements so so now that we've done some form of shading um, I'm actually just going to take a kind of learning stamp and just just for me because I just prefer So we've got simple shapes you can decide how much you want to fiddle with it you can decide how far you want to take it 
you are absolutely once you've kind of done the outlines you can decide do i just want to make this a practice sketch do i want to make take it all the way and actually add in a lot of shading maybe some little details um, you can absolutely do that so i'm just actually going to add some depth so i'm going to take a 2b pencil Ooh, yeah and i think just add in some darker lines and shadows but obviously it's not the most important thing to me at the moment I'm just very pleased that it looks like Bulldog. <laughs> I think that's the whole point of just getting here is to be able to actually recreate the subject and what you're seeing. Which makes it nice, it makes it worthwhile and it's like, okay. I achieved what I planned and set out to do, which is to create this little wrinkle blob shape and make it look like a dog. So I hope you also kind of was able to create the little blobs into a bulldog. I quite enjoy this reference. I think this would make a fantastic standalone drawing because um, it's got a lot of interest. Um, and fun thing so let me know down below if you would like to see this in a full-blown all the detail tutorial um, you can i'm more than happy to add it to the growing list of things that i want to create for the channel so just let me know because I think this little chap would be very fun to draw, especially with the color of the markings and also it's got some nice fur details and the spots and everything. So just let me know. And I'll be more than happy to create a tutorial on him. Because this is now the second time that I've drawn him. So. <laughs> so there we go. I'm quite, I would say, I'm pleased with how... It's proportion to one another, I think. It makes shape, makes things. We've got the basic shape of the head and we've got everything makes sense and lined up. Nothing seems too small um, or too large. There's no random angle that detracts from the look of the animal um, which I'm quite pleased by um, and I hope you also kind of 
found some sense in what I say because I know my mind sometimes also just wanders a little bit but yeah that was like a quick I, I kept it under an hour obviously you can faff with this a lot more um, create more shadows and depth and all of that um, and have some fun with it yeah play around with your powders if you're new to powder play around with powder play around with maybe using a darker pencil or blending stumps or cross hatching i do i kind of do a mishmash of everything um so yeah i hope you enjoyed that found it any form of useful um and yeah i'm looking forward to doing some more quick freehand sketches um different animals and actually doing some small small drawings um and play around, actually play around with pencils so yeah that was quick just hb and 2b a blending stamp and then bob's your uncle uh, that will be that and then i'll see you all for the next video cheers <laughs>